Welcome to the Utah Puck Report. Uh, we are down to the wire for the Utah Grizzlies, so we thought it'd be a great time to bring in head coach Ryan Kanas, which head coach and like general manager, vice president, you're you're just you're the guy, right, Ryan? Yeah, I wear a lot of hats around here, yeah. <laughs> the the joys of minor league hockey, you get to learn and do uh just all kinds of stuff. I'm sure there's a lot of times where you're finding yourself doing stuff that you never knew you'd be doing as a head coach. Yeah, there's never a, never a dull day around here. Um, yeah, especially this year, there's been so much going on, um, so many injuries, call ups. It's just every year has its own feel to it, and you know we've managed to to get this far, and you know I'm proud of this group, and obviously this weekend, the uh, you know the ball's in our hands. Uh, you know it's up to us if we want to get into the dance or not. You know. So let's talk about that. You've got you got playoffs. You're I, I was looking at the the standings right before we went on the air. And there are like four teams within two points of each other from third, fourth, fifth, sixth place, right? Like you guys are neck yeah. and neck with a bunch of teams. Um Idaho is basically running away with it. They've they somehow produced a powerhouse team to the, this year. Um, which as we know is awesome during the regular season, but you never know what that's gonna produce during the playoffs. Yeah. There's a lot of teams, uh, and you guys play Wednesday, Friday, Saturday against yeah. Tulsa. Tulsa, yeah. And what do you have to do from here to make the playoffs? Win out? Uh, so to guarantee a playoff spot if, if we win all three. Um, if we win two, we'd probably need Wichita or Rapid to lose a game or Kansas City. Um. Yeah, so it's tight, but I mean, we hold our hold the cards here. If we win out, we're we're in. So that's a it's a good right. spot to be in. Um, a little bit different than your first year of coaching, where you guys just uh, had an amazing regular season. You seem to have such a unique group on the ice, and you and I talked about this a little bit last year. There's there's a chemistry that sometimes just clicks, and then sometimes. It's, how hard is it when you have so many pull-ups, so many injuries, and then you, you know, we, we know that during the off season, you lost Mason Manick, who looked like he was a real character guy in the locker room. Is it just impossible to try to sit there and balance and figure out who's going to work well in the locker room as well as on guys? Yeah, it's, I mean, each year in the, in this league is it's, you kind of hit the reset button, you know? Um, and it's, it's, tough every every day is different in this league you you know one day you're happy and you got all your guys and next day two guys are injured two guys are called up and it just seems like that's been one of those years for us but you know we've found a way like I said to you know to be in this position and you know we win these games we're in and you know our group's really excited about that and they're pretty focused yeah you seem to have a, a really good group of guys. I, I mean, I'm I'm lucky because I get to, you know, sometimes come in and practice with you guys and, and get to know some of the guys and maybe see some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. And uh, you've got some real characters, and character guys, but characters too. Uh, Lucas reminds me a lot of a uh, – I'm trying to think. Of, there, there was a goalie. We had, Igor Bobkov was a goalie that was here yeah. years ago. Just, uh, you know, you definitely knew when he was around, very – very loud and funny and entertaining. So he's fun to have around. Then you've got like such solid goaltending. You have three goalies that are all three of them could be your number one. So that's, that's pretty lucky to have, right? Especially at this level. Yeah. We've, we've had an amazing uh, goaltender trio. We knew they would be good. They, they've uh, the first half of the year wasn't, and I, I think they'd probably agree that wasn't their best half. But, you know, they've come on strong here in the second half and, you know, obviously produced a lot more wins for us. And, you know, we did a, did a good job climbing up in the standings. We were, you know, in January there, things were looking pretty grim, but, you know, we turned things around. And, uh, yeah, it's a fight every day, but, you know, it's a good fight to be in. You know, some teams are already, you know, booking flights home for players and, you know, they're already mathematically out. So, to be, you know, from the first half we had with with injuries and everything, I mean, the injuries in the second half have, have piled up here too, but that's just part of the game. And that next man up mentality, you know, kind of what we've always had here is, 
is uh, shining through right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I I was in the locker room and saw some of the struggles like with uh, Johnny Walker and seeing how frustrated he was with his injury and, and like he's working hard to try to get back in the lineup and wants to be part of the team. The team seems to want him to be there, but man, when you're hurt and you're playing such a physical game, there's not there's not much you can do. Yeah, and he plays a tough brand. Obviously, he's been out of our lineup now for the past few weeks and I don't really see him returning um this season unless a miracle happens so and we got a couple other guys in that boat that we've lost some pretty key guys at at a key time but you know we've we've gone out and signed a few uh a few guys out of college and major junior and uh it's kind of bolstered our lineup for the time being so um you know losing can you see when you see uh, the college season ending and major juniors ending, you're watching guys. Um, you know, what, what do you go after? How do you start looking for guys? What do you decide? Like, this is the guy we're going to bring in, or like, is it uh, through contacts, or is it just from watching games? A lot of it's uh, contacts and trying to find uh, guys that have played with them. You know, the hockey world's small, so you can typically find a guy that's been in a locker room with that guy and get a character reference from him and. You know, um, we look for guys that are going to fit in kind of seamlessly. And, you know, we got this uh, – Mick Mesner came in, uh, played with Christian Simeone at Merrimack. We got uh, Nolan Ritchie who came out of Brandon. Uh, he was a captain there. Um, Miner and Shear and Jameson all skate with him in the summer. And then uh, Mayhew played with uh, – right at DU. And then obviously Luke Martin, we – we had them all year last year. So it was, it was nice to add those four guys. And uh, we'll have another guy coming down uh, tomorrow. So that, which will be a big help up front for us. Yeah, you'd think, you know, I, I, a lot of the message boards and the Facebook and a lot of it's just they get frustrated. A lot of the fans are like, oh, why did this happen? Or why did this player move or whatever? And everybody thinks it's so easy, but they don't know like how hard it is. You know, you're you've got a jigsaw puzzle every day, basically, that you have to find pieces to to fit. And sometimes mm-hmm. they don't always fit, but you've got you've got holes that you gotta plug for like we keep talking about. So you've done an amazing job this year of just constantly looking for guys to bring in. The avalanches seem to uh, you know, really borrow, especially Trent Minor. Like he seems to be going up and down every other week. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's the nature of the business that, you know, teams are always pulling from us. And we've had, uh, you know, Kyle Betts went up to Belleville. He played two games for us this year. Went up to Belleville, um, you know, after two games. And he's at, he'll be the player returning tomorrow. Okay. Which is a massive ad for us, the center Iceman. And, uh, you know, Brandon Cutler's been up most of the year. So these are ECHL guys that, you know, you expect to lose your two-way guys, but, uh, you know, uh, for Cutler and Betts, like, it's good for them to get a look, you know. Um, that's why these some of these guys sign ECHL deals and kind of bet on themselves, and that's just it's the business that we're in. And, uh, you know, we've managed to make it this far, and, you know, I, I feel pretty confident in in this weekend and, and getting into the, into the playoffs. Well, that's awesome. Uh, one of the other big th- things that came up, uh, you you made a move a couple weeks ago that nobody saw coming, uh, sending a player to Cincinnati, a, a good player, you know, uh, putting up a lot of points, and you end up getting – and he was already up in the AHL, so he wasn't really with you at the time. But then you end up getting Mason Mannix rights back. And Mason played last year and a little bit, like a couple games the season before, fan favorite, local kid, um, can I just ask, like, what's what was your plan there, and if you have, is there any hope of seeing Mason this season? Uh, so that trade was, you know, we were not expecting Andrew back uh, for the regular season, so we thought we'd make a move, um, and we got Mason's rights in that move as well as another player who we'll get at the end of the year. Um, the idea behind Mason was let's grab his rights back. He's here if he wants to play. Great. If not, um, I totally understand, you know, he's, he's going to school, but if he had that itch, then it was just uh, one more weapon 
that we had. And uh, I don't think we'll see him this year. You know, he's pretty busy with the school, but I just wanted to make sure we had that option covered if it if it was uh, going to come true. And if it doesn't work this year, you still have his rights for next year. So if he has more of an idea that, you know, hey, I, I figured out my school schedule a little bit better. Maybe I can actually do this thing. That's a possibility for next year, right? Well, we won't have his rights, actually, because he didn't play this year. He'll end up being a free agent on uh, July 1st. Um, so we could talk with him contracts. Obviously, I know I, you know, I love Mason. He was he's a huge part of this team last year. He's an unbelievable kid. And I'm sure if he's going to play anywhere, he'd, he'd love to play in front of his hometown. Yeah. Uh, that's like uh, instant 20 season tickets just to his family, right? Like, <laughs> well, I think it's an instant suite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think, I think they ended up getting a suite last year. So, you know, it was pretty cool seeing, uh, you know, a, a dream come true for him. He obviously to play in the Maverick Center and to have the season he had, um, you know, it was pretty special. It was, uh, it was yeah. a pretty, pretty cool to watch. Yeah. That was a lot of fun for us, too. I mean, obviously, you know, like his parents are some of my best friends and I see him all the time and, and just watching Mason grow up since such a little kid. Being, uh, I think I've told the story before when he was a little kid and he made the junior Grizzlies. And they were like 10, 12 years old, whatever. And they had, we all gave our kids cell phones at that age. One, people thought we were crazy, but it, they carried it with them everywhere they went and we could track them everywhere they went. That was my whole, you know. Yeah. But Mason's voicemail at like 12 years old was like, hi, this is Mason Manick from the Utah Grizzlies. <laughs> so like he was a, he was wanted to be a Grizzly for as long as I can remember. So man, it was just, it was magical for all of us. And I think everybody's just hoping to see, like, I, th- I think, we're going to beg him all summer to just give it another go. But yeah, I know he's, he's, uh, you know, he made a, a life choice. Obviously he has his schooling uh, covered from the Western hockey league. And, you know, once he's done with school, uh, he's got that to fall back on. He's only going to be, you know, 24, 25, if he wanted to come back and play. So it's, I think he made a great choice, you know, and he obviously got married this summer and, you know, Mason's a pretty uh, strong-headed kid and knows what he wants in life. And if uh, the door's always open for him here, though, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Ryan, I just uh, we're excited about this weekend. Again, it's Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. I'm going to have tickets to give away on the Utah Puck Report and KSL 103.5, The Arrow FM 100. Like we're all giving away and promoting the games all week. And, I think uh, Saturday's Star Wars night too. Oh, that's my night. Yeah, and that's usually between that and Guns and Hoses. It's usually the top ticket during the year. So I'm expecting pretty big crowds this weekend. So it should be a, a great atmosphere for our team to get the fans into it. And yeah, I'm I'm expecting good things this week. Well, us too, man. We're, uh, you know, all of Utah is behind you. We're excited about what's going on. We're, we're excited to uh, be in the building. And honestly, if you guys were just, if this was a weekend and you were already out of it or you were already guaranteed, it would just be another weekend. But with so much on the line, I just, I look forward to this kind of hockey. This is already playoff hockey. Um, it's, it's more intense. Everything matters. Star Wars night. It just seems like a lot more fun and, and it's, it's going to be awesome. So we'll give away tickets. Uh, tickets are for sale still. I don't think Saturday's sold out yet. So we'll get everybody that's listening. If you're looking for something to do, I mean, this is, you got to go. This is playoff hockey and Utah Grizzlies fighting for playoff berth or playoff rights. And uh, come out and check out a game. Ryan, you got anything else you want to say to everybody before we let you go? No, I just, you know, I would urge, like you said, urge people to come out. You know, even the Wednesday, Wednesday game's just as important as Friday, Saturday. So. You know, the more people in here, the more more life it's going to bring to our team. And, uh, you know, we should be should be flying around looking good this week. Nice. Well, we're going to we're going to rock that Maverick Center this weekend. I'll be there Wednesday night for sure. Uh, Coach Kanasovich, thanks so much for taking the time. I know you're, you're busy and things are crazy right now. And but we appreciate you coming on the show again. Yeah. Thanks for having me as always. OK, that is the Utah Puck Report. Hey!